um, acting officer in charge of serious and organised crime branch. At about 7pm last evening, members of the Crime Gangs Task Force, supported by Star Group and Eastern District CIB, attended a public park in Prospect where they arrested six members of the Comanchero Outlaw Motorcycle Gang, who are a declared criminal organisation in South Australia. A 55-year-old man from McGill, a 37-year-old man from North Adelaide, a 31-year-old man from Northgate and a 21-year-old man from Brooklyn Park were all charged with criminal association offences. These men were bailed with strict conditions not to associate with each other and they will appear in the Adelaide Magistrates Court on the 7th of October this year. In addition, a 20-year-old man from Port Adelaide, in company with this group, was also charged with carrying an offensive weapon and being in possession of prescription drugs. He was bailed with the same conditions to appear in court on the same date. Further, a 38-year-old man from Prospect was refused police bail and further charged with breaching intervention order arising from an unrelated incident and he will appear in the Adelaide, Port Adelaide Magistrates Court today. South Australian legislation prohibits three or more participants of a declared criminal organisation to be present in a public place. The penalty for this offence is a mandatory term of imprisonment to a maximum of three years. The activities of outlaw motorcycle gangs often present risks to the community and SAPOL will take every available opportunity and every means available to disrupt their criminal activities. The arrests made last night are evidence of the resolve, commitment and proactive actions that police will continue to take against members of outlaw motorcycle gangs. I'll take any questions that you have. Sure, we, we don't know exactly what they were doing in the park. Uh, clearly it's a, it's a public park um, in, in suburban Adelaide. At the end of the day, uh, members of outlaw motorcycle gangs know that they're not to um, hang around in groups of, of more than three. They go to these places to try and get out of the police eye. They try um, and take the notice off of themselves by being more public than that. But they also go there to plan, strategise and discuss what they're doing. Um, directions are given, decisions are made. So they go there to further their criminal behaviour and their activities. What they were doing there exactly last night is not known to us. Can you divulge um, how the arrests were affected? Was it uh, several vehicles turning up and making arrests? Well, we had the assistance of members of Crime Gangs Task Force, clearly, and also Star Group and um, Adelaide. Um, CLB. So we had a number of police attend the park um, and police action was taken um, and the, these six members were arrested. So um, clearly there was a, a significant police presence there at the time um, and there was not too much fanfare. It, it, no one was injured and there was, uh, there was no other real issues relating from the arrest. It went pretty smoothly from a police perspective. Can you tell us the ranks of the members? Sorry? The ranks of the members? Sure, we think that um, out of those six members that we have, uh, senior office bearers or office holders of the Comanchero Motorcycle Club in South Australia who were present, and that's not unusual because it's normally those people who are giving the directions and making the decisions um, at these type of meetings. So from, from that perspective, what that's been able to do is significantly um, hamper and, and disrupt their activities going forward. How many of them do you believe are senior members? Uh, we would say all six. Um, uh, our, our senior members are holding different levels within the club. We have now uh, been targeting um, activities of outlaw motorcycle gangs um, more stringently now for some weeks. As you would be aware, there's been some, some in incidents um, in the past few weeks which has led us to even further focus our efforts on outlaw motorcycle gangs. And that's not to say we don't ever stop that, but even more in the last few weeks. So the activities that we've been undertaking in the last few weeks and uh, the information that comes in from members of the public um, in relation to outlaw motorcycle gangs and their activities is what led uh, us last night to where this incident happened. Can, can I just say this? Targeting outlaw motorcycle gangs is it's a collaborative effort at the end of the day. It's a collaborative effort on the part of SAPOL. It's not just the Crime Gangs Task Force that target outlaw motorcycle gangs. It's the whole of SAPOL that does that. We go to every part of SAPOL to play a part in targeting their activities because we know that they affect community safety. So 
we'll use all resources available. It's a collaborative effort nationally and internationally um, around outlaw motorcycle gangs. So we will work with our interstate and overseas law enforcement partners to target their activities. And it's a collaborative effort from the community. And I encourage members of the community who have any information about the activities of outlaw motorcycle gangs to call us because we will take action. We know that any action we take has a positive impact on community safety. Do you know if the, the members that were arrested are directly linked to the shootings earlier in the year? We don't know if any of the members arrested are linked directly. Clearly there's been tension between two, at least two outlaw, outlaw motorcycle gang groups in the last few weeks. Those investigations are ongoing. Um, and you'd be aware that um, at least one arrest has been made in relation to one of the shootings at Ingle Farm. So uh, th this is just an extension of, of ongoing investigations in relation to those activities. Has there been any further incidents other than those shootings that, were, that happened recently? Is there any others that haven't come to the attention of the public or the media? Oh, th I mean, there's, there's incidents that, that occur regularly. We know there's tensions. Some are not even reported to police that we don't know about at the time. So. Uh, the ones that uh, the media and the public are aware of are the ones that we're investigating, yes. And disrupt, obviously, arrests like this disrupt that. How significant is that in terms of keeping the public safe? Oh, very much so. Um, and I think I highlighted just before that we've taken out some of the key decision makers um, of the common chero in South Australia at, in this particular incident. So you, you take away decision makers and leaders of a group, you have a distinct impact on their day to day activities and whatever they may or may not be planning. So it's, uh, from our perspective, um, it's, it's a fantastic result. The community should take a lot of comfort from the fact that we've been able to remove uh, or remove these people um, from that environment, but also put some really hard enforceable bail conditions on these people so that we can continue the lines of enforcement around members of the outlaw motorcycle gangs. Is there remaining custody? The six uh, men arrested? Uh, only w only one has been remained in custody. The others have got bail. And Kills Park? Pardon? Kills Park Gallery? Uh, they're in a park um, in Prospect. Um, the one nearest uh, Fitzroy Terrace there, near Blackfriars College? It's near Alexandra Avenue, I think. No, Alexandra Street, I think. Great. Sorry? No, they weren't wearing colours? No. Uh, only one person was arrested with a weapon, that was a knife, but they never had any drugs on them. Yeah. Great, thanks everyone. Thank you.